Story Peeling. Ich hatte sie total vergessen. Sie wohnte einst in Winnipeg. Und äh, mein Fahrrad war damals kaputt. Und ich habe bei ihr und bei Richard Wo sind sie? Wo sind sie? Wo sind die Mäus? Wo sind die Mäus? Da hinne! Hinne! Ab! Wo sind die Mäus? Wo sind die Mäuse? My name is Randolph Vespa from Germany. The greatest gift God gives us is the gift of life. The greatest loss is to return it unopened. In 1987, I got my first cancer operation called malignant melanoma. A few days later, they removed my lymph nodes and the cancer was already in the lymph nodes. When the cancer is in the lymph nodes, nobody can say how long you live. So the doctor is going from statistics, and the statistics says, six to 12 months to live. I can't, I was very depressed for sure uh, because I was very sportive. I played soccer, I played tennis, I was sportive, I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I got cancer, why? And I think my cancer is from a lot of negative stress. And so I tell to myself, when you make a positive, stress on your body when you do what you like to maybe you can survive after six months I was not dead <laughs> after 12 months I was not dead but nobody gives you any work in Germany because everybody thinks you're getting to death so uh, and I don't like to fall in the uh, depression hole again 
and uh, I say, okay, I hop on my bike, take my first dog, Shere Khan, biking 3,500 kilometers to South Europe and included the Alps. I crossing 12 Alp pass over 2,000 meter high just to prove myself I be not sick, I have just cancer. And I coming home, sailed everything, it was in 1989, and fly in the first time to New York, crossing the eastern the, the United States in the winter time. Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, going into New Brunswick, it's getting colder, going into Na Nova Scotia, and then the 36,000 ton container ship brings me to St. Jones, Newfoundland. And I was very lucky I was in the coldest week than 25 years ago. Hi, well, so after a couple of while, I have to quit and be going back to Halifax and then from Halifax to New Brunswick and to Quebec. I need all three months, I need a checkup. That means x-ray, blood test, etc. The Fondation Quebecois de Cancer arranged a, a free checkup. And the doctor asked me, do you like to talk to cancer patients? I say, what can I tell the cancer patients? Just what you do. And I say, I like to live. Right, tell them this. Okay, but the next day was 25 cancer patients there, two big newspapers, La Presse and Journal de Montréal, a TV station and a radio station. I was close to a heart attack <laughs> because I never talked to people, not even to a running camera. But I started to talk and people started to cry. They say, well, what I have done with my bad English. Because the first English what I got was, ladies and gentlemen, pass me a seat pass and stop smoking. <laughs> I learned my English on the road. But the doctor says everything was fine. But this people feeling sorry for himself. And now they see someone, he fight with his life. And you are a very good example. This was great for me. Because I saw, you know, I'm, uh, I'm useless because of my cancer. Now I got a new destination. Show other people never give up. And I'm crossing Canada, and to this time in 1987, there was not many doctors there. They believe in mind power. So I have just certain groups where I can talk, just certain hospitals where I can talk. I going up to Alaska again, and uh, another melanoma on my left ankle grows. I know it is a melanoma. Six weeks after this operation, I was back in New York, biking to the Appalachian Mountains. And I got another tumor under my right arm in the cancer clinic in North Carolina, in Asheville, North Carolina. They removed my tumor under the right arm, a centimeter tumor, but it was not malignant, but it was for free. This was a good thing. <laughs> the important thing is I like to show people never to give up. I like to be an example for other ones. I have, in the meantime, I got 132,000 miles. That means 211,000 kilometers behind me. It's more than five times around the world. I have so much letters and things from people wrote me. I give them hope, and this is what I do. I like to be an example for other ones. I cross in Europe, and then I go into South America. In October in 1996, a car rolled over me, killed my dog Shere Khan, put me in the ditch and leave. He think I'm dead. 
I got lucky. I had my hammer done. My brain was damaged, and my leg was just on the left side on the skin. Four hours later, they find me, and they bring me into La Plata. In La Plata, they like to amputate my leg, but they find out I'm from Germany. So they call the German embassy. German embassy calls my friends in Germany. Who pays for this? And my friends say, we will take care of it. Then they bring me in from La Plata to Buenos Aires in a German hospital. I was one month in the German hospital in Buenos Aires, and then they flew me over to Germany, and I was five years in the hospital. That means I got 48 operations on my left leg to save my left leg. It's a little bit shorter now, but uh, still not wooden. Uh, and uh, I can talk. I talk 10 years like Joe Cocker when he have two bottles of whiskey. <laughs> the other. Because, because when I talk to cancer patients or to anyone what... Uh, is interesting on my story, and he find hope in my story, and I see the sparkling in his eyes. This gives me always gives me power to go back on the road and help. <laughs>